first, the Fed decision tomorrow could bring the bears out of hibernation. As stocks inch back toward all-time highs, the Fed has already put the chances of a rate hike on hold. In fact, the chance of a rate cut is rising, and it's already said the unwinding of its balance sheet is flexible. All these statements calm the markets initially, but is the Fed out of tools to keep the bulls happy, and could a Fed that's too duffish sounding, uh, will, will that spark a fear fear on Wall Street? Two-part question. Are they Can out you, of tools? Mm -hmm. and, and if they turn, me, too, if dovish, they turn too dovish, is that, is that actually be, bearish? Hmm. Great question, Mel. Is that, I mean, that's a great, one of your better questions complex. maybe of all time. I, to answer the first part, no, none, they're not out of tools. BK can speak far more intelligently than I about the tools they have. But I'll say this, in terms of being too dovish, absolutely it can spook the market. I mean, this was a Fed that in October was telling you full systems go. We're on cruise control in terms of the balance sheet. We have three rate hikes in 2019. What did they see all of a sudden in the greatest economy in the history of our republic, not my words, the president's, to make them go a complete 180? So I would say if they get too dovish, absolutely, especially in the wake of what Federal Express just said, could spook the market. They saw the market cave. That's what I think they saw. They saw the president. They heard the rhetoric. Right. They heard the rhetoric. They saw the market cave. So you know where I stand on this. I do believe that they're out of tools because even if they have the balance sheet, I think it means for them that they're throwing in the white flag, that all of that easing, we can never get back to normalized balance sheets. We can never get down to, to three trillion. It is bets are off. They're out of ammo. Well, I mean, the chances of us getting back to a normalized balance sheet are very close to zero. I mean, you just have to look at Japan and find out what happened. That's where we're headed. So there is plenty of tools for them to use. It's called printing money. They've done it before by a different name. But they got a lot of money that they can print. To me, what's more interesting about the Fed coming tomorrow is where's the Fed put? Where's that strike price? The market's telling you right now on the S&P 500, 2720, let's call it. That's the March 8th low. That's the strike price. That's when the market started to turn around. And to me, that's where the market's telling you, all right, that's where the Fed comes back in. If we don't go through, if we don't, if we hit that level, we test it and don't go higher, then you have to reevaluate. But I think the Fed is okay for now. I, I think you guys are overreacting. I mean, I, I think, you know, to say that the Fed Never. is out of tools and out of bullets <laughs> and all this stuff, first of all, is to also imply we're at zero rates right now, which we're not. I know it's, we're close to zero, but we're not at zero rates, okay? Zero rates would produce a very different economy than the one we have, which, by the way, it's an economy that I actually think that there is inflation, which is why I, I think reflation trades are very interesting right now, because rates don't, rates are a function of policy. They're not a function of what's going on globally. And, and Guy brought up the president, and, and look, we all have to ask the question. It, it may not be a market's question, but ultimately the markets will respond to this. Did the Fed, did something change in the Fed's pivot that was data related or did the Fed change and why did the Fed change? Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can look around the world, you can look at Europe, you can look at Europe that sure. basically Germany went into recession two quarters in a row. China, uh, PMIs finally after two years of going sideways and not being that big a deal really have decelerated. So you know, there's a rationale for what the Fed did. Even I would admit, I think it was extraordinary, the change in rhetoric from October yeah. to yeah. where we were uh, in mid and, and maybe the question now is, having gotten FedEx's quarter, which was the, for the fiscal third quarter, it was weak, the outlook, they cut their outlook uh, for the second time in three months. In three months. Um, is that the new data point? Is that going to be at the it's, vanguard it's of the data point. data points that the Fed is going to digest in the next, in the next nice. couple of months? which will cause them to pivot, pivot even maybe to be more dovish, See, now, if that's well, even possible. I'd say 95% of the people disagree with me. I don't think the Fed should be looking at, you know, corporate guidance, FedEx guidance, Apple's guidance a couple months ago. You know, in my opinion, we all know that processed sugar is the worst thing you can have. We all do it, but we know it's horrible. We I also love it know. When you go on oh, these oh no! But, but listen, and, but and listen. I know that it's going to lead it's to something. It's going to lead to something. To the current it's going to lead to something. Okay, go we ahead. also know intuitively that if we can ever get off of it, it is life changing. You feel so great; it absolutely changes your life. The problem is getting from point A to point C. That in between is extraordinarily Sounds painful. Sounds like cold sweats. And are that's where the head. Fed is right but, now. But we know this all quickly. Yeah. We know that they shouldn't like be doing what they're doing, and we. We also know that if they can ever get back to normalization, it'll put this economy for the first time since Paul Volcker on serious, strong foundation. But none of us have the political or courage to get to well, that point. We don't even know if it's political courage or not. So, so Tim, the, the only thing I have a problem with what you're saying is we, if there is inflation, shouldn't the Fed be doing something different other than hypothetically cutting rates at this point? 
because if the, if that gets back to that question, if they okay. have no, if if there is inflation, they are running out of bullets, and they only have two and a half percent to play with if it starts to actually creep up. So look, I, I don't think we have runaway inflation, but I, I and I think we have to fight deflation. And I think that's what the Fed. So they're, they're not hypothetically cutting. I, what you're saying is by implicitly, they're yeah. implicitly cutting by by not moving forward with an aggressive tightening policy. I, I, I would agree with that. Um, I, I think ultimately we have a dynamic here where Guy talked about the financial oppression that the Fed has ushered on the world. And I would argue this is since long term capital. I mean, we could go, we could have a whole show wow. about this and it wouldn't be enough. But the market we have right now is a market where the Fed is going to continue to be a Fed put. And by the way, it's not how I felt until somewhere, you know, somewhere in mid January with the Fed really confirmed what they started to give you some, some detail on earlier. So, um, bottom line, there, there, this is. This is for the market to, I think, continue to have pain trade higher. I'll go back further than you. I think it's the 87 crash when they cut oh, rates wow. and said the Fed put is there. But that's why the market's pricing in a Fed rate cut in by December of 2019. It's still at 27 percent probability. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. But up from 2 percent just at the beginning of March, to me, tells you everything you need to know about this market. Investors are telling you the Fed is going to be dovish well into 2019, possibly into 2020. And the fact that the stock market has risen on that news tells me that, mean, that that's what the BK, investors want, mean, which is crazy. Doesn't that mean how we started the show? Is he, Are they out of bullets or the second part of that question? Do, does the dove Tools, bring out? Does the Tools dove bring we out the bear? Referencing. And at a certain point, you have to say the ECB, mm -hmm. everything that they did, everything the Fed has done, it really only paid off for X amount of years, and now we're left with a shorter stash of ammo and bigger Possibly. problems. Maybe the market where it is right now, no one is saying. But you always say, and I agree with you, it doesn't matter till it does. Right. right. So we'll get information in the next two days to find out whether it matters. If the market sells off on FedEx and the market sells off on a too dovish Fed, then we might have a problem. But if, we, if the market rallies tomorrow and we have bad news from FedEx, in spite, and, of, FedEx. In spite of that, that's an unbelievably bullish sign just from a trading perspective. Hey, look, I, I, I I know that fundamentally and theoretically we, we should be we should be challenged. We should have a lot of problems with what the Fed is doing or not doing. Uh, but the reality is this U.S. economy right now is, tr is probably clipping somewhere north of 2 percent GDP. Expectations for a lot of companies, including FedEx, which trades at 10 times earnings, which isn't expensive, even though they've guided two out of three quarters lower. This is the market we have. This is the market well, we're looking at. Why do you think? Why do you think second time, no, it's the second time in three months. I understand that. So, so and, it's but, up to two times out of three quarters. Well, why you can make the GDP argument it's, in, it's international, GDPS, though, right? I mean, I mean, that's what FedEx has said. It's international. International, anemic international shipping has been the problem. So then look at what's happened in the market. You've seen this FANG stocks. That's where you're going for growth because there's no growth out there. You've seen uh, the rails, right? They've done quite well because that's domestic. So that's what the market's that are telling completely you. insulated from the continuing slowdown in macroeconomic I conditions that FedEx has seen. The market is telling GDP you what you buy. went from 4.2 last year to 3.4 to 2.6, and the estimates now have a one handle on it, if not a, sing a, a decimal. So right. what we, what we have have to ask ourselves is are we different than where we were at 2850 just three months ago or whenever that was when we were assessing the same things right ultimately we we're assessing those things in the context of a trade war and a fed that was more bearish or more hawkish and that took us down to 2350 wherever we went um, so let's argue we're in the same place because we were questioning global growth Mm -hmm. at that same time, and we thought the policy was going to make it that much worse. So the question is, should you be selling off the market aggressively here, or should you be trading with the pockets of, of trading ranges that I think we, we have in so front it, of us right now? It's the context of expectations. It's the context of, yeah, we know, the, we know that there is a global slowdown that is different today versus October, which makes today's investing environment better. Well, and, and but but again, it's a, it's fluidity in global data. This morning we had a confidence measure, the most important one in the German economy, which actually came in stronger. And I would argue that we got overly bared up on global data, which I think was not very good. But again, look at European stocks that mm -hmm. traded above the 200 day now for the first time. Germany, the DAX is above the 200 day since effectively since last August. You've got the Euro stocks 50. So eff effectively a composite. So the FEZ ETF, F-E-Z, that's how you trade it, is now above the 200 day since last May over the last three days. This 
this is telling you that the market priced in a lot of really bad news, and on some level, relative to itself, the delta is pretty good. Yeah, the rate of to Tim's point, the rate of it's lousy in Europe, but the rate of change is getting better. So although it's lousy, it's not getting as lousy as quickly. I guess is the best way to put it. But in terms of our market, you know, what does it mean? And again, I'll say it for about the fiftieth time. You know, I've thought the S and P is going to roll over for quite some time. I never thought we'd revisit the levels we're at now. But if you just go back and look where we are, and back to go back probably September, October, and look where we started to break down from, it's pretty much the same level. So I would submit with a VIX that was just around 12 and a half, I mean, to me, that is a sign that complacency is far too great. Everybody believes the Fed has their back. I'm not so sure. So why not use that to buy insurance today, right? That, right? That. That's, I mean, listen, we're talking about a lot of different things. We don't know what Powell's going to say. We don't know what's going to happen with the semis. But with a VIX at 12 and a half, 13, I think is the last I saw it. Why not buy some puts against your portfolio? Give yourself kind of both options. You don't need to be a crazy trader. You just buy insurance when you can, not when you have to.